Okay, all right, everyone, we are live. All right, so it's Pee Wee here from DE Esports or Definitive Esports. We're doing Cho from Chobo to Gashu episode five, and this episode is going to be covering the Protoss race and just the opening builds that you want to be using. So if we recap the last few episodes, uh, the first one was just going over units. Second one was looking at um, just going in to play the AI and get a good feel. Third one was uh, unit control, playing around with units, getting used to all the different buttons and com combination of different buttons that you'll be using. And then the last one, what did I do for episode 4? Episode 4 was, oh that's right, mechanics and macro. And we were just looking at what people mean when they say macro better. And it's pretty much just using better mechanics to hit your timings, be better, more efficient, etc, etc. Alright, um, so this episode we are going to be going over the Protoss race. And let me change the scene. So we're back into StarCraft, and we're going to be going over six replays that I played just well not too long ago. And I went for very simple builds. If you were brand new to the game, these are the types of builds. If you were a Protoss player, that you should be doing. They're very safe, and they give you tech roots to pretty much destroy your enemy. <laughs> All right. So for Protoss and Tyrant, you can pretty much do the same builds. They're very very similar in terms of how you react. Oh by the way both all these replays are played against the AI just to make them really quick I didn't have to bother people. So yeah er, uh, for Protoss and Terran I pretty much do a two gate robo into Colossus and then I you know <coughs> you do variations at three gate or you can throw down an expansion etc etc. So I'll also go through all the timings of when you meant to put your buildings down you know with efficiency and stuff like that. So let's start the game. So obviously the beginning of a game is always pretty boring. So your pile of nodes goes down to 9. As soon as you get the 9th pro build and then you have 100 minerals, you throw it down. And then you corner boost your gateways. You scout, no, sorry, you corner boost your nexus and then you scout. If this is you and you're new to the game, I would scout uh, at 9 after your pile on. Just to make sure you're not going to get cheesed or rushed or anything like that. So gateway goes down to 13. If you're wondering why, I'm, why, uh, what I mean when I say 13 is up by here, the th your supply. Uh, this is what you use for build orders. Fair enough. When you're new to the game, you're not going to be using proper build orders. But for the time being, just try to get these numbers down up to about 20 supply. You're fine. Because after that, you're not really going to know what you're doing anyway. So um, we're looking from my point of view because. The computer or the, the replay or magly does that because I'm playing against the AI. So you take a gas at 15, you set the pylon at 16. You start an export, which is going here. Start an export is your tech. So you build your gateway and then you can build your side next core. And then when you build that, it allows you to build these two units. Your probes are under attack. Oh, actually, I think. And you can build these structures then once you have your side core. So my probes in the face. I'm just getting from scouting. Normally a tear. Um, <coughs> if you, you know, if this is you and you just got into ladder, you're not going to be getting people really do this build. It's very, o very old. <laughs> the AI does it. So I'm just building stuff. Stalker. Pile on. Another gateway. And I just chill. Now the. When you play against like the AI first off, just to practice, they'll always attack you around eight minutes with a group of five units. That's how it normally goes. And once you hold that, they'll come at you then at like twelve, thirteen minutes. So I'm just I know his attack's gonna be coming too and I see it coming, I have an observer which is an invisible unit. And <coughs> I'm building units, I have my immortal sentry stalker. I got a bit of a spread. Just so as he starts to come closer I pull down the the ramp because I know I <laughs> I kill his forces. I am going for Colossus now, but because I, I destroyed his force I didn't really need them. I'm evil. So there's one 
um, Colossus. So, so, yeah, that's a Colossus. Hopefully you know what that is. These are pretty much your tech 3, they're the beast units. If you can get a lot of these, you should be able to win the game. If you get them really early, you should be able to win the game, etc, etc. They're very powerful units. Can you just any questions? No? Cool, alright, back to the game. Yeah, I get my classes, so I, I want to show you the classes, and then I can pretty much just... I can't be moved anyway. Peter GG's. So as you can see I got another classes here, some more units here, my expansion, I'm mining, I got that, I got some extra gateways, etc, etc. And yeah, that is the standard one. We're going to see that again now. But a different re So, yeah, once again, go straight to me. Production. I think the set might be a bit shorter than the standard one because I am only covering the Protoss race. So yeah, gateway at 13, oh that's gas at 15, pylon at 16, and then Cyber Next for which is the at 17. Do that. Do I build a unit? Yeah, should we do it? Yeah. So I build a zealot, unlike the last game, because you want the zealot just in case they come at you with a few marines early on, or the you want a zealot for the marine SCV all then. Get my scouting done. I will also look how to defend the push, because he done a slightly different push, which attacked sooner. So I didn't have the same amount of units. He's going for Double motors. This isn't going to upgrade. Silly. Uh, back into my base. I got my second gateway and my robo going down. I got a pylon. Just like built units. He's building stuff. Just like an upgrade though. Just like an income. So all the while I've been building it, you know, probes this entire time, building units, etc., etc. That. So, I see him coming when he gets to like right here. And then I just prepare myself so I see him coming. And then I say, okay. You know, change my forces. Leave these here and then put these right here. If you're wondering why that is, within StarCraft 2, if something is on the high ground, like right by here, yeah, these units on the low ground by here won't actually be able to have vision and attack them. So you put your units at the edge, so when they run by you just pick at them without worrying about losses. So he comes at me, and then just to play it safe I force the other He keeps his units here. If, low, if someone does this, you like, so it's just three kills, stand here, peg an atlas. You can force the builders out so they don't come to your base. If you have sentries and stuff like that, they're not really uh, the best fighting unit. You don't really want to fight them. Uh, like you, you build them to keep them out of your base. So that's what I do. I kill some free units. I don't think I lost anything yet. Obviously, I lost a lot. So I'm doing that. I got an immortal. My closet. I expand. You won't be expanding as fast as me. So don't worry about that. When it also comes to Colossus, or are they here they are, they're very, 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 very gas intensive. Like super, super gas intensive. If you're doing them off one base, once you throw down your your robotics base, you don't really want to be building any other gas units because you can't really afford the gas. So as you see now, I whooped in two zealots. At the front here, look, I've, I've got them on rally pointed, so once they get here, they stop moving. And that's just to give me formation. If Obviously he's going to be coming from this direction. So I have my units right here. I have a concave immediately. And I have them spread out so... Like, you know, he, he can't pick up the two sentries or... Right, so the on the way. 
here. Here's what I was on about when I was saying like you need the gas. I can't get range yet because I don't have the gas. Even with my plus reduction, <coughs> take my gases immediately. I need so much gas for clockers. This is why whenever you see someone two base, um, sorry, a one base Colossus play, you'll just see a crap ton of zealots because they're saving all their gas for the the Colossus. So he he ex he's expanding. Building years, he's got a crap ton of units now. So so I start pushing now. I'm feeling confident. I got two Colossus. I got the third one on its way. For some reason, the AI Terran will just fly around Medivac with no units. For scouting, it's really strange. So, yeah, I'm starting to get my concave for formation. I got the pylons. They'll keep their units in the base. Lots of force field. Come back a bit. When a Terran gets medevac with stim, concussive shell, combat shield, etc, 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 you're pretty much going to need some sort of um, splash damage, which is like Storm, Archons, or Colossus, or really good upgrades in good numbers. Because with that unit composition, MMM, you know, Marine Marauder medevac, is very, very, very potent. and. Well, it's, r it's ridiculously cost efficient with good control, so you can lose a lot of the stuff when they want, and like you have to be very careful. But now I have Splash which from the Colossus because Colossus do two attacks and they do like a line attack, so they'll kill a bunch of stuff in a line. Where and because of that, the meta accent is useful, still useful. Though. So that is TVP, uh, PVT. Th that's pretty much the basics of it. So it's like you know, 13 gates, 15 gas, 16 pylon, 17 core. Go for an extra gateway around 22 supply, and then your robotics facility around 24 supply. And then just get a good scout on, see what they're doing, and then react and build correct units. You know. Don't lose units stupidly. You know, mine were on hold, moved by here, so. That they didn't run down the ramp and die and stuff like that and just, just play it safe if you go for Colossus as well you're gonna be in a good mood um, you know you're in a you're gonna be in a good game and with Colossus as well because they're just they're very a move friendly is what people would say because um, they do a lot of damage they have good range and they have a lot of you know they can take a lot of damage so you can pretty much a move them during a fight and Okay, and then you just micro like your know, your stalkers, the uh, sentry, stuff like that. Classes are normally okay. And yeah, okay. So that's PVT. Uh, uh, leave this one. Next one is going to be PVP. And once again, this is so similar to your standard PVP uh, PVT. Let's just see if there's anything going on in chat. No. Everyone alright in there yet? Alright, so into this game now. By the way, I only have one screen down here, so I have to keep tabbing out. So go into production. So this is a bit of a strange one. Um, when you play a very hard... I should have got a friend for this because I didn't... Ex well, I should have got a friend afterwards because I didn't expect him to keep doing this. But the the AI will, for some reason, build those two gateways at like 13 and 16 supply and like and build a bunch of zealots within the new way. It's really odd. So it, it makes it quite hard to do my standard build, which I showed you in the last game, and get away with, well, without dying pretty much because they just send so many units. But normally, if you're in a ladder game and you see two gateways, really, it can be good to get an extra gateway. And then 
build a couple of zealots and get your cybermates for one then tech up. Because if you go for the tech first, you might not have enough units to defend the attack that they're going to come hit you with. So it's all pretty standard, you know, 13 gas, remember these now, 13, 13 gateway, 15 gas, 16 pylon, 17 coal. That is the basic for PvT and PvP, and then you just react off that, you know, you can get an extra gas if you want an extra gateway, whatever you want. Always continue building probes. So, he's done the Zealot. My, so I w I've gone straight for a side next go. So now my Zealot starts. Obviously, when you look at last week's episode, I'm talking about efficiency and everything like that. Um, efficiency is something I'm really big with. <laughs> if you look here, uh, the Cybernex core takes 50 seconds to construct, and a gateway uh, takes 38 seconds to produce a Zealot. All right. So that means if you throw down, say, if you build your Zealot first and then wait for the, si the 150 minerals for the Cybernex core, your Cybernex core is going to be a lot more delayed than if you were to throw down the Cybernex core and build a zealot. If you were to actually build a zealot you know, with good high min, they should come out around the same time as you can kind of see here. So, you know, it's three seconds off. So, that finishes. Build the stalker. I put a gateway by here, do I? No, I build a pile of this. I build a gateway by here, just to lower the amount of units in the base. So, that stalker. So, here's what I was on about. There's one, there's one, there's three, there's two there, two more in production. So, to delay them, because the AI is stupid, it will follow just one unit instead of doing what I wanted to do. So, I start attacking the Zalots to make them chase me. These are the first games I played today, so. I don't have some multi They They actually put me in a lot of trouble with the AI did. I was just, I, I was being greedy to show you guys, the viewers, to um, this build on what you want to do. And like, like I said, you, this isn't the correct response to what you see, but I went for it anyway, just for fun. Like so many zealots. So yeah, I'm building, building. My, I was a bit too distracted by that stalker, so my buildings and stuff like that are down um, so fast because of the micro in the stalker takes a lot of control because <laughs> he dies so fast if he gets attacked by these and it's you know it's three health so it dies from the next one. So continue building units. Like I'm saving my gas, saving my gas. Second leg is down. My gas. Building them further just to do a division or in case DTs come. So good. The DTs get to your base. I do that. You don't have an observer, you know, in construction or in your base. You screw pretty much. So, you know, just build and build it. I'm going for tech, so he is ahead in supply. He has a kind of sell off. Very easy supply to get. So it, that is why he is ahead in supply. Obviously, I got classes on the way. I got for range soon. In PvP, try not to expand that early. Uh, especially once you get the game, because there's a lot of all in attacks and stuff like that that will pretty much kill anyone who expands. And a lot of. That's, there's a lot of that in PvP. <laughs> Up until just recently, everything was one base, and it's like. The saying goes like, um, a PvP ends when you mine out your main base, and a, P a TVT ends when you mine out your map. Yeah, classes, classes. I you was know, just playing it safe, I got stuff in my base, I got my sentry, you know, they're on full energy. Like, I know he's going to start trying to attack me soon. It's a bit delayed because of the zealots early on. So I ex obviously I expect him to come back here and I'm just going to like force field him and chop him off. 
Because you always, if you can, you always, 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 always want to chop people off with your sentries. No way of even. And then, pretty much. God damn. Yeah, pretty much. Like, he threw a wave on me. Uh, I just. I can go and kill him. Actually, I got. I'm gonna do the creepy leads, I didn't want to leave. I'm making sure everything dies. There we are. Okay, so that was game one of PvP. Next is game two, and luckily for us, game two is actually a more standard game from the computer, which I would never expect. Computer so BM. Just going to chat see if what's going on. Hey everyone! If anyone w uh, wants to ask any questions while we're doing this, please do so, and I will answer them as soon as I can. Alright, so back into PvP number two. We have Antigua Shipyard this time. And the AI actually doesn't go for the two gate stupid pressure. So, so this is a much more standard game. I prepare for it anyway, I start I roll off. But like you don't really want to be rolling off music. This can be um I can't think of the word. That can be very risky. If they pick that off, you know, it's free shots, easy to kill. So, you know, we're just doing the standards. So you get, like, in this case, the computer knows what to do. <laughs> Good. Building his airlock, I don't build his airlock because I know he hasn't gone two gate. Um, you f normally okay not to build as airlock. You just have to be careful if they do something like a four gate. That normally means they're four gate. Then or they're gonna, di well, they could possibly do it. And yeah, so you have to be careful of that. Like I go for the stalker. So if you go for the stalker, the stalker's faster. I more memorable, more microbot. So as soon as you build it, you can always send it to the stalker out. Whereas you have to be careful with the airlock, because if I catch his airlock with my stalker, um, and it doesn't have enough room to get away, then it's dead. Like, And by room to get away, I mean if I catch his airlock by here, I'm not going to have enough shots to kill it by the time it gets home. So I'm moving out with my stalker, let's say it. Chillin. Try to find. Okay, back in my day, you know, my logo there. So I went for a bit of a later game, so I'm gonna save. I get it. Thank you. So you go for some of the aggression. You, you actually see a lot of, um, Pototis doing something like this, like. Three stalkers and two zealots are up until about they plan them, they stop doing it. And I'll push around now. And it's stupid. Like, right now it's six minutes, see, six and a half minutes into a game. In a standard game, a full gate would have hit by now. So you don't want to be attacking into someone's base when you know that they def you know, at this time they definitely have more stuff than you. And if they don't, they're tech and hardcore. And. It's, well, it's better not to risk it anyway. But yeah, they, it's guaranteed that I would have more stuff. So you never pretty much, at, say, after six minutes, you never want to push up a ramp. Because, well, you'll see, imagine, you know, this is, I literally see this happen to so many people on the last couple of weeks, my computer's been broke, so I've been watching everyone's streams. Just for entertainment. So yeah.
the way also um as we were talking before with the high ground advantage like I'm on the high ground he's on the low ground so you can't see me the way it works with force fields it's about right by here this line say by there like where that zero is if a unit say comes up to by here he won't have vision on the high ground so you force field by here to deny that vision and then you can just attack on you know, and you'll see like if a stupid if a a new player does this. <laughs> take advantage of it. Just stand there and take the shot. Saving a lot of money because he didn't do the such aggressive opening that I, c I can get away with being so greedy. He runs home and then I okay, go back to my base, wait here, and both men just chill. Plus, this range immediately can afford it, like, so it's better to be able to afford him at the same time, but if not. It's okay, you know, if you have an extra mortal or you don't go for the robotics pay immediately, that's fine. Alright, so yeah, let's carry on. So I'm just, just chill, man. Looks like the classes are very extensive. They actually take ten five seconds to build, which is still quite a long time to be very good. It's one of the longest in the game. Um, like even with Chrono Boost, you're still gonna only knock it down to 35 seconds. Oh, I don't know, 40, 45 seconds max. It's actually 50 seconds. <laughs> There's so many different numbers. If you're wondering, a right, class takes 75 seconds and a Corona Boost will knock off 10 seconds, but a Corona Boost is 20 seconds production. So you can have, say, like 4 Corona Boosts on a class because every time you Corona Boost it, you lose 10 seconds. So, like, if you Corona Boost it twice, you've lost 20 seconds, and that is, in theory, a Corona Boost you've lost in terms of, like, it's in time consumption. So in reality it takes about 50 seconds for Colossus to start going off. Alright, let's just my little probe. So now I have my Colossus count going. I believe I have one. No, I have two with the third one nearly done. It's quite close to me. I saw I warp in by here and then I build a pylon by here. And then I just wait for my units. As you can see as well, before I go into the fight, you know, you set all your army here, you, you spread them out, and then you hotkey everything. So one is everything, two is my ranged units, or my ranged units exclude my classes, so it's my stalkers and my sentries. So I, I can't see it, but it's my seven stalkers and my two sentries. And then group number three, like you can't click on them, is my classes. And that just makes it more easier, you know, you can 1A into the army, 3 with your class, like the models, 2 and your know, 4 shield, guardian shield, etc, etc, etc. So yeah, let's go into this. And models do a lot of damage, so I can't even play hard fire in them. So yeah, that is PvP. And as you can see, like your PvP, PvP ridiculously similar. There's not much difference. The same builds work high percentage of the time. And PvP and PvT are I feel very easy to get a good understanding of. My like my PvP and my PvT are very good. My PvZ is unfortunately not as good. And PV it's the Zerg it is. They're just a dodgy race. They're completely they're so unconventional that 
like they don't even compare to Protoss and Terra and where Protoss and Terra and you can kind of compare them to each other but the Zerg is just like out there so you need slightly different builds this in early game or in lower leagues the same build will work or slightly if you're using it for that but it's not really an expansion build like a two gate robo isn't really an expansion build it can work um, if you play it safe but it's just it's not something I would personally recommend No questions yet. S please, guys, if you have any questions, just post them here. If you have, you know, yeah, I don't mind popping into the unit tester really quickly if someone wants to know how you micro this or that. Alright, so PVZ. Uh, PVZ, you always have to roll in. It's like, pretty much how it goes. Because Zerglins are so fast and so small. Like, you don't want them in your base. You want to keep them out. You know, that goes for all enemy units, but Zerglins especially because they're just absurdly fast. Alright, so you'll see me wall in by here, and I'll talk about the wall in as well. I am going for um, a three gate variation in these, and that's why I recommend all PvP in the uh, in lower. I will say early game limit, say lower leagues. Um, because it's just a very safe build. You're not going to be very comfortable doing a forge fast expand, which is you know economically better, but it's a lot less safe. Uh, whereas a three gate expand is very safe, and a three gate expand revolves around getting your gases earlier, or your second gas earlier, and building the tent to defend you. And then when you expand, like you know six, well, four and a half, five minutes into the game when you expand then you have a large sentry energy which you know, really protect you. That's the design bit. So I go for my side next go. What you'll notice is when you wall in there's a few different variations of wall. You can do this one which is the more standard one and you just leave a little gap right by here and you build a zealot and you put the zealot on hold move in this gap and that stops zealots running into your base they can't get through the zealot um, they're both melee units so if he attacks you your zealot with, with zerglins you're gonna kill a lot of them because if, if by here he's only got one zerglin attacking at a time and a zealot is infinitely well a zealot I believe the numbers are a zealot will kill six zerglins like that so that's really really good so yeah, we we carry on building. Oh yeah, sorry, that's what I was saying. So yeah, you um you can have that type of wall, or you can build something like a pylon by here. So a pylon by here, and then you have your gateway by there, and then your side next core like right by there. And you have between your gate uh, between your pylon and your core, there's a one block gap, and that is where you put the zealot. You have to be careful though. If you put say if I put that side next core by there, and move that gap by here. So it was like the two corners of the buildings. You wouldn't actually be able to get a stalker out. Um, you could get sentries and zealots through. That's fine, but you couldn't actually get stalkers or mortals out of this gap. So you have to be careful with that. <coughs> well, it's a much tighter wall, but it's just like you're going to get stalkers on the screen. So I know, I know the Zergs are very aggressive. The Terrans are uh, the computer zigs, they pretty much stick to one base and they go for a roach war and like that. And that's always how it is. This is why I never say play against the AI team because they don't know how to play. They always go for just a roach all in pretty much. So as you see I prepare for that I got my gas go in and stuff. Second gateway. So obviously scouting is important. If you see a roach warren immediately, it's just don't expand because he's coming at you. You can expand, but you're really giving him the chance to kill you. Whereas if you don't expand, it's next to guaranteed that you'll be fine. But good unit control, like obviously with a lot of these, you will see. Like I just have some fun. Like I don't have to be play it too quickly. Like I'm not gonna go back to the I've got my two gateways. Yeah. That's my fault. It's fine. I will be fine. So, yeah, as you can see, I've denied vision, so he can't see up on the high ground, and I'm just. 
close to the closest pick as units. You have to be careful though, because obviously if your units are back here, attacking his units the little ground, and you know you forget the force field, he's gonna be on top of your units. So you do have to make sure you're not you know silly like that, and you're very diligent with your force fields and. You approach it and annihilate them. Essentially, have force fields and outrange approaches. So, we're back in control. Effectively, nothing. Sound effects. There we are. Cool. Alright. <coughs> so yeah. Um, you know, just text me saying the game was too loud. So yeah, as you can see, I'm just killing stuff, playing defensively, and then I know I'm completely different. I'm you next. I barely you to control that. So then. If you're wondering why he. Well. Like the computer obviously can't really think, but the computer f decided to come back and fight then, which was a good idea because roaches are slower than stalkers. So if he has like a stalk, uh, a roach by here, and I have a stalker by there, and we're running back to his base, I should be able to get there around the same time as him. Which means obviously if he's an enemy, like I can kill his, hopefully kill his unit before it gets home and safe. So that's a good thing. Like if you can always fight with your units if they're getting attacked and you can't get away with them. So I just have some fun here. Let's do this. Go back into my vision and So yeah, now I don't have vision because he's the defensive one. So like I know he's got I know he's waiting right by here. I just know it. And then boom. And then, see, I've been going down, also some units out. Just trying to get him to come down, I am, to wind him up. I think I got enough to kill him anyway. That's, it's just more fun. So, I got my concave again. So, you know, if he comes down here, obviously, why you want to have concave at the bottom of your ramp and, or at the top of your ramp or wherever? Um, he's going to have to move through a choke, which is this by here. So, you know, if he has units right by here coming down, the first u few units are going to get, you know, attacked by every unit I have, just because I have the concave. Whereas, you know, it's going to take him a few minutes to get his, you know, or a little bit, to get his units down here and then have a concave. Especially if he has smaller ranged units, like roaches. So I'm just chilling. I have my observer, so I can get vision. And I'm like, yeah, I have vision. And then I just the have some fun. Like if you can do this, this is really good. So I grab my sentries and I'm just like, yeah. Boom. <laughs> and then he has to fight then. He kinda skip. So not the best control, but save my sentries because they're important. And the hurt ones back so I don't do many units. And then I can go into a base. Um, so yeah, that is game one of the PvZ. Yeah, is it all okay? Uh, is the sound okay now, guys? Alright, so the last game, and then after this we'll wrap it up. So we have another PVZ, and once again, the Zerg does the exact same build, but this one I go for classes just to show your classes in PVZ. Uh, and we'll discuss some other things, because he goes for like Hydras, which just get annihilated by classes. So, like even though I know he's going for the the roaches, like I still wall in, you don't need to, it gets roach. Against roaches, having something like a wall in can be a bit detrimental, because it it lowers the concave that you can force yourself to have at the top of the ramp, which is very beneficial. You know, if, if units come into your base, so the walling can be 
you know, ineffective in that point. But it's still better to, to have the wall in because most people have enough of the going to go already to stick into one base. So he's getting his pool, he's getting his gas, just completely standard. Keep scouting, keep scouting. I got my gas, pile on, film probes, side next four. I'm gonna take that bike, cancel it. I was thinking hey, he's going for roaches, but he's uh he's going for roaches, so I'll get extra gas faster and cancel my a lot. But I thought, hey, it's not fair to the viewers, this is the pr the build you should be doing. So I built my Zalot, made my gas, carried on building stuff. Extra power on now, is it? Yeah, just to make them safe. It's a bit early of a pile on it. Never mind. Again, my, I had my good scout on, I seen the Roach Warren. Send him back to here. Get, get ready, where is he? There he is. Just so I have the vision, and then I just no roaches are coming, so I just build some sentries and units. Get a second and third gateway. I also expand in this one as well, and do a slightly different. Um, and I have a, l I throw a lot more force fields down at his base as well, just to show you like how you can take advantage of people with force fields and stuff like that. Because if people are like, are stupid enough to put their units in a place where you can easily get a nice force field and just slaughter them, go for it. It's like, it's just three units. Right, so he doesn't have much force field at the bottom of the ramp. He can't do anything. Like, he keeps his units here, he really shouldn't keep his units here. So they just keep force field and then they die. Over there, and once again, if I bring these units back, he actually can't attack them because both Stalker and the Sentry have a bigger range than the Roach. So, what can he do? Just take shots at all. So I get my expansion, I get my robo, so this is much more safer play, it's a 3 gate expand into a robo, into a classes, and attack. Like I said, you only really want to take build orders to about 20 supply, because until you get to at least platinum, diamond, you after 20 supply, well, you're not going to get to 20 supply without making a s mistake. Uh, <laughs> so there's no point going for these massive build orders that, like, go down to 80 supply, 50 supply or whatever because you're not going to get to 30 supply without messing it up so this is why I always tell people just get something like a you know up to 20 supply you, your first zealot up to your first zealot and then after that learn what you're meant to do but don't take the numbers yeah so like for example if we were to apply it to this one it'd be go for blah 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 get three gateways, play it safe scout Take an expansion. Once you get the expansion, go for your robotic. Um, actually, that was a bit earlier. Sorry. <coughs> get your three gates. Get a robo. Once you have your robo, go for the expansion. Once the expansion is in production and you're safe, go for the Colossus. And then once Colossus are in production, wait for a couple, a push, and do an attack. So that is like, you know, that would be a very simple build order to give it to someone. So once again, force fill them out. A bit too aggressive here. Uh, I'm just showing you like the very is a way to like keep his units here, I'm just gonna I'm just gonna pick up them. Like you don't wanna leave them in a in a spot like that. So Colossus number one is in production. I haven't got enough gas for range yet. There we are. As soon as you expand, if you go for classes, you are going to need the super early gases at your expansion, just because, as I said numerous times, classes are so, 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 so gas intensive that you can't really support them off one base with two gas. Yeah, 
we're just having some more fun, just wind them up, wind them up. I have the arts now, so I have high ground vision. So, <laughs> I just do this, like, four children by there, and you know, if people, you will get people who actually just will do this. Get the free kills, dude. So, fastest number one is nearly here. Oh, right there, there he is. Fastest number two is in production. So, I, you know, I have lost a few units. I haven't really been building much. I'm just building, I'm just happy building Colossus. And I just get a couple of kills. Just like a unit's lost. Ah, oh, 500 units lost, 2,500. I haven't even lost my team speed. Sufficient. Okay, so he comes to attack me. How's my box to come from? Like, uh, so it's carrying too much. You need to get this boss. It's just abuse their mechanics. You know, like you always. To become a better player, you have to look at all your units or all the whatever and realize what their strengths are, what their weaknesses are, you know, how to take advantage of the mechanics of. Of the game, and like with Colossus, with their cliff walking ability, because obviously Colossus is so big that they can walk up and down cliffs like this. You can just abuse it, especially against things like Zerglings and Ultras and stuff like that, or Zealots, because they're um, because they're melee units. Obviously, they have to be physically touching the Colossus to uh, attack it. So if you have like, imagine you have one Ultra right by here, right, and your Colossus is on the low, low ground, but here, Ultra's coming down to come and attack. Oh no, just walk onto the high ground. Ultra turns around, it's gotta come back up, walk back onto the low ground. And, you know, with enough attention and unit control, you can infinitely just kill it, no matter what. And I've done that in games for like five minutes. Like, And you'll have like the pylon, say, on the low ground next to the cliff. So you can walk in on the low ground or the high ground. And then if you have Blink Stalkers as well, you can blink them up and back down, and the Colossus can walk up and down, and you can cause mayhem for people. So, um, yeah. Like, just expand again. And in the computer GGs, like, oh, my head's it's really good. He having glasses and headphones. Alright, so this episode is a bit, well, it's going to be slightly shorter because I only want to show you the six replays, two of each for one race, and just show you pretty much what you want to be doing. And as we've seen, the PvT, PvP are pretty much the same builds. They're so generic, um, those two. And then the PvZ, you just want to be safe and then expand. And then, pr if you're a, um, new to the game, classes are really good, just because they're very emo friendly pretty much you can like you don't have to babysit your classes as much you do as say you know a bunch of blink stalkers because the you know, blink stalkers rely on unit control and stuff like that whereas classes are if they're tech three they cost a lot of money so they're a lot more they're a lot harder to lose say you can still obviously completely get them owned um there's just a lower chance so yeah, that is everything for tonight in terms of uh, from Cho from Chobu to Gashu. Um, so I just want to give a few shout outs to sponsors, obviously to D Sports stuff like that. So first off is Antec. Um, please go to Twitter. It's Antec Inc. or this is Antec UK as well. There's a couple of them and Antec Europe. Please follow them to say thank you for sponsoring esports and everything like that. They also do the Antec Attack. Uh, which will be on this Wednesday, which I'm also casting with Banks, which is going to be a lot of fun. They do that for um, they do that for six months, and then they do a lot of other variations and promotions, and they sponsor teams like Team Dignitas, etc., etc. Uh, if you could please follow me on Twitter at twitter.com forward slash pewdude, p u g h y, that'd be really awesome. And then D Esports, which is D und uh, underscore Esports, and then check the website and everything like that. This VOD will also be up loaded to YouTube so it will be archived for future reference and hopefully like maybe you're watching it now so uh, <laughs> there we are guys hope you enjoyed and uh, take care guys bye bye